हेलो हाय एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग आई होप यू आर ऑल फाइन एंड एंजॉयिंग योर हॉलीडेज टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टेक हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सिक्स एंड वी आर गोइंग स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर व्हिच इज चैप्टर नंबर नाइन द गुप्ता एज आई होप यू ऑल हैव अ बिट ऑफ आइडिया व्हाट हैपेंड आफ्टर द मगध एन एम्पायर एंड देन वॉट ऑल हैपन ड्यूरिंग द मॉरियर्स टाइम सो दिस चैप्टर इज this chapter is the just continuation of what happened after the mauryan ending after the decline of mauryan dynasty so we are going to learn about the gupta dynasty which came into power in india and had a great influence in the architecture in the literature in the uh, in the monetization in the agriculture or in the administration and you know, in the military everything in this chapter we will be covering about how the gupta dynasty was founded and how they um you know survived these many years as rulers before all this we are going to start about like we we will start by you know by speaking a bit about the post mauryan period which affected in the deccan as well as in the northern india so the post mauryan period when we talk about the deccan side the deccan side was uh, taken over by the satavahan satavahanas Uh, they were the uh, they were the successors of the mauryas in the deccan and they nearly ruled for around 300 years which is from bc uh, 1st century bc to um, ad 220 under them the traders they enjoyed a lot of facilities as the trade flourished the merchants started becoming rich and most of the most of the rich or the wealthy merchants were followers of buddhism and gave lib- liberal donations to the buddhist monasteries or viharas the satvana rulers they were uh, they were basically the worshipers of uh, lord vishnu and shiva and <clears throat> they patronized rock cut ar- ar- architecture and cave temples that we see in the deccan now moving on from the deccan this is what all happened in the deccan but north in india had a very interesting uh, timeline uh, when compared to the deccan side now because of the uh, fall of the mauryan empire the state of magadha which was a great state at that time shrank in size and lost its power so now several independent states they started uh, coming up and you know they started fighting with within each other and the whole north india was um, you know disturbed because of the constant fighting between different independent states this left out a bit of gap here in the northwestern side and this gave way to the foreign invaders to come and come and you know uh, invade india the foreign invaders such as the indo greeks the indo parthians the shakas and the kushanas now later when they came and they started you know uh, building their own empire here <coughs> we are going to learn about a kushana empire or the kushana ruler whose name is kanishka now he was one of the greatest kushana ruler who proclaimed the beginning of the shaka era with his succession in ad 78 now the shaka calendar that we know is all is 78 years behind the gregorian calendar that we follow nowadays then the kanishka he um, he had his capital shifting from uh, purushpura purushapura uh, to peshawar okay then he was a great great person a patron of buddhism organized the buddhist council at kandava kandalavana which is a place in kashmir right and at this council the buddhism split into two sects i hope you all remember that right we already learnt about these two sects and you had your exams also on this so the two sects are the mahayana and the hinayana and kanishka patronized the mahayana buddhism now because of this mahayana buddhism which promotes idol worship in the state in his state he started promoting idol worship for like of buddhas and this led to the growth of the gandhara and the mathura schools of sculptural art so talking about this cultural art the gandhara school combined greek and roman art styles with the indian art style that was that was existing here in india while the mathura school produced images in purely indian style so the gandhara they mixed the roman and the greek styles because they got it they got their influences from outside but 
the mathura school they were purely indian they were only following indian styles <clears throat> now after the central asian invasion india started opening up to the silk routes now de- due to the silk route which began in china and ended on the mediterranean shore of west asia the trade expanded many crafts or new crafts started developing and even textiles like taxila mathura and ujjain textile uh, trade centers like taxila mathura and ujjain flourished they got the access for the silver uh, silk route and through which they started transporting or trading their uh, exporting their uh, their materials to the outside world that we uh, in the in the mediterranean side or in the european sides now the indo greeks and the kushanas they issued a large number of gold coins silver coins and copper coins and due to this we are able to you know um, try to build up the story because of the remains of these coins that we have they tell a lot of things now the indo greek shaka and the kushana rulers patronized scholars in their courts the jataka tales were composed during that time and the charaka and shushruta made significant contributions in the sphere of medicine now these are two people the charaka charaka and shushruta they were two people who made significant contributions to the medicine or like the medical field now contact with the greeks also led to the improvement in the astronomy side of india i hope you all uh, understood what was happening in the deccan and simultaneously what was happening in the northern india the rule and under the leadership of kanishka the great state of magadha which was already which had already shrank it started you know uh, uh, in the northern india they started building up their own um, their own empire and under them many things happened as we said the silk roads they patronized buddhism they had many gold coins they uh, promoted literature as the jataka tales and uh, peshawar was the capital now all those things now moving on from this point onwards we need to study about we, we will be starting with the gupta dynasty now before we start with the gupta dynasty i should be able i should say that the kushanas ruled till about ad 320 which is um, you know ad 2 th- sorry ad 230 now shri gupta a local chief of magadha under the kushanas he founded the gupta dynasty now just as we were all we always talk about the different types of empires coming in from inside the uh, this from in, coming from inside the ruling empire the same way here also the local chief of magadha who the magadha state was already a big state a very uh, flourishing state but then later it declined and then later when the kushanas had taken over a local chief was assigned to this magadha state and he founded the gupta dynasty in the 3rd century ad now the dynasty reached the height of its glory in this 4th century under the leadership of chandragupta 1 and many others so let's start with this Now Sri Gupta founded the Gupta dynasty in 230 AD or 3rd century AD and Chandragupta talking about Chandragupta he uh, the Gupta era is believed to have started from 322 and above so when Chandragupta once succeed ascended the throne of Magadha under him Magadha again rose to prominence now he had many influences his rule uh, his rule uh, he ruled from Pataliputra and then his political influence it it started from magadha to prayag and then to saketa as well which is ayodhya so it was a, it it covers a huge area now he remained in power till ad 335 later after his death we know after his death obviously his son is going to be uh, uh, he is going to ascend the throne and therefore the Sam, samu samudra gupta he ascended the throne in 335 after the death of chandragupta now we he is often regarded as the greatest ruler of the gupta dynasty and we get information about samudra gupta samudra gupta from the different types of coins and inscriptions that we uh, that he had in, made now the alahabad for example the alahabad pillar inscription praises samudra gupta's military achievements it was composed in the sanskrit language by the co- poet hari sena we know that samudra gupta was a great warrior a scholar a musician a poet and a good ruler 
and his direct rule it uh, it it extended from bengal in the east to delhi in the west and in the indirect rule it extended from northwestern frontier in the west to assam in the east himalayas in the north to the kanchipuram in the south that means though his though his empire was only from bengal to delhi which is the direct rule that we can say but his indirect influence which is like you know he could control areas which were beyond his empire which was be, compared beyond his like which was uh, which he couldn't uh, you know it, it was it never came under his uh, jurisdiction but still he had indirect rule over there as well so through his military campaigns he did uh, he did many uh, wars or battles and then some of them uh, they were destroyed completely and then some were you know allowed to pay tribute to him and still continue with their own rules so that is uh, the starting of our uh, the gupta age we talked about two people chandragupta 1 and then samudragupta chandragupta 1 uh, was the first person with whom we can we should believe, we believe that gupta era started and then it follows to other rulers as well i hope you all understood what we learned today and it was a wonderful class i guess um i hope that you will read it again on page number 63 and 60 62 and 63 and mark a few uh, important points look for it and hope to see you in class soon bye